Please note that all episodes come with a blanket content warning. The books we read often tackle difficult and triggering subjects. We'll include specific content warnings in the description of each episode, so please take care of yourself and check them out. And finally, if you're not comfortable with swearing, now is probably a good time to stop listening. Hi, welcome to Hectic and Eclectic, the podcast for people whose brains are hectic and whose bookshelves are eclectic. I'm Fia. And I'm Hope. So, how's your week been? It's been uneventful, you know. Has it? I've not really done anything. You made a crochet crop top. Oh my god, I did. And, and it, it took you fucking forever. Yeah. It felt like it took, it actually, in, in, in actuality, it took me two days, but it took me like the majority of those two days. Like it was pretty much all I did for two days was crochet my hands were cramping so bad oh by the end God, of it I bet they were. but i'm so proud of it it looks really good as well thanks you've done like a like a rainbowy thing but with it's like pastel pastel pastel, pastel rainbow. rainbow yeah i was my original plan was to do a pride one mm-hmm. so like the proper like bright yeah red like, orange yellow yeah like the primary yeah, yeah. primary color um with a white outline Mm. And like white straps. Oh, I really cool. like the pride colours, like a mm. rainbow colours against white. Um and it was gonna be like something that I wore to Pride this year. Um, but I didn't have the Pride colours and but I still wanted to see if I could pull it off. Uh-huh. Because I taught myself to crochet, mm-hmm. right? So um I've done like very basic things, like I'm in the middle of like doing a blanket and I've been yeah. in the middle of that blanket for about a year. Blankets take fucking ages, though. Is yeah. it like is it like a full size adult yeah. blanket? Yeah, well, technically, yeah. I'm sort of. I, originally, I was making it for my cat, um, but I actually think it's too pretty to give to her. <laughs> so I'm probably gonna keep it. She will. She will nick it at some point, right? Because she's a cat. Yes. Um, but yeah. So, and I just wanted to see if I could make something that wasn't just a fucking rectangle. If you can crochet granny squares, you're like, oh, well done. You can do the most basic. Yeah. thing in crochet right uh-huh. it's not not that it's not still a skill but sure um whereas if you're telling me that you can make like i see people make like mini like toothlesses and they've crocheted them by hand and like that's impressive toothlesses yeah like toothless the dragon from how to train your oh, dragon oh i see wow i that uh, really did not like that's a skill them. like to oh be able God, to crochet yeah. all those different shapes yeah and then get them together and yeah you wow. get my you get my drift. I do get your drift. Um, so yeah, um, I just wanted to make something that just wasn't a fucking rectangle. So I thought, what better way than to make myself clothes? Yeah, and they look it looks really really good. Thanks. And you've got like a corset thing at the back. That yeah. also looks really good. Yeah, that was bean. That was um, bean. I had that idea, but obviously I I tried to reach around to do it, and I definitely pulled my tricep. Oh, no. Um, so it really hurts. I like crocheting injuries. Genuinely. <laughs> I was like, um, I was struggling to like pick up a glass of water <laughs> because it was so painful. Oh my god! It sounds like you need medical attention. <laughs> it's just a pulled are muscle. You, are you okay? Are you going to be able to lift um, books no. today? No. So I had to get Bean to like corset it, and like because crochet holes are quite small, mm. um, you can't just like feed it through. You actually have to use the hook to pull it through. Right. Because there's no way you're getting your fingers in, in a crochet hole. Yeah, I was just going to say, do, when you say crochet hole, do you mean like the the gap between each like stitch? Yeah. Right, okay. Because you could probably make like a little yeah, yeah, like a yeah, button a hole loop. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I didn't do that. No. Um, so I had to teach Bean to get a crochet hook through yeah. and then pull the strap through on each thing and to get it oh to course God. it. And he did a really good job. He actually did. Anyway, how was your week? Yeah, it was good. It was good. Um, I've I've read and seen some really depressing things this week. Yeah. Um. So great. I, I finished. I finished of Cattle and Men. Here she is. Um. And that was um dark. And then, well, it's a dystopia. So it, I would yeah, hope it's dark. It's, well, it's dystopian. I don't um, think it'd be doing its job. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I knew what I was getting. I knew what I was signing up for. Yeah, for sure. um, But then I also went to see um, The Zone of Interest. Yeah, you've told me about this. Yeah. And um, I do not want to see this movie. I, I think, think I should see this movie. Yeah. I don't I think to. possibly everyone um, who is white and European um, should be made to watch this movie. Yeah, I, I feel when like that like goes a, for every sort of Holocaust movie, except The yeah. Boy in the Striped Pyjamas. Which we've already discussed. I fucking hate 
you really do I really yeah do. you've got full-on vendetta against yeah. that, that yeah. whole thing mm-hmm. um but yeah the zone of interest was the sort of film that I am glad that I watched now a week later but I did have to come home yeah. and cry a lot <laughs> It's, just dissociate for a while <laughs> yeah yeah honestly um what what the film does really really well is it's sort of like I, I'm, I can't remember what the, there's this um philosophical theory called it's either the banality or the mundanity of evil mm-hmm. um and what the film does Both really work. yeah you you get the drift what the film does really really well is it portrays that from um Rudolph Hearst's family um so basically they um they built this really beautiful house and this amazing garden sprawling garden um against one of the walls of Auschwitz um and so they Great. are sat isn't it yeah, the gorgeous. ideal house actually. Yeah, that's that's where I'd want to live personally <laughs> that wouldn't be just utterly traumatizing yeah. and no, that's yeah, fine. But this imagine is... just on a nice summer's day, just like should we go and like chill in the garden? And that's what you get. That's like, the whole. That's the whole movie. Like, Everyone just chilling in the garden. You know how we're like, oh, should we go and chill in the garden? And you sit and like read against the backdrop of birdsong. Mm. Yeah, <clears throat> backdrop of birdsong is such a thing. Like the soundscape in this movie. Yeah, that's what is amazing it, yeah. and horrific. Yeah, because like. Yeah, like you say, it's a beautiful summer's day. There's butterflies everywhere. Yeah. People are like, you know, picking picking vegetables they've grown themselves against the wall of fucking Auschwitz. And you've got it's smoke in yeah. the background. Oh, it's absolutely horrific. It's it's horrific how normal it is yeah. to this family. And it's horrific watching these children grow up and having it normalised for them yeah. as well. Um, yeah, it was an, an amazing movie, but I had to go home and cry a lot. For sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, good good week for like cultural experiences for me. Great. Um, but now I'm having to read something a lot lighter. Oh, yeah. A lot. A lot lighter. You, sh- you should read I Kiss Shara Wheeler. I should read that. As a palate cleanser. Yeah. My current palate cleanser, it's, it's beefy. She thick. It's a big boy. It is a big boy. Not for me. Not, big book no. fair over here. Yeah, that's fair. It, although like it's not it's not an intense book it's very readable so uh, uh, last week i think mm. um so with my adhd I obviously i go through hyper focuses quite quickly mm. um, and i rotate between three generally sometimes the odd one like pops in for a few days oh, yeah. um like i had like a clay thing pop in for a few days oh yeah I, that like, was a good one yeah i made myself like a, a little toadstool and put it on my bookshelf and then i've not looked at it it's a bit like a penis. Um, yeah, it does a bit. Um, I've not it's looked at it. It's just the colour. It's the colour more than anything. What, red? No, no. What penises have you been looking at? <laughs> not red. Not red and not spotty, because um, it's a it's a fly agaric mushroom that you've made, and that's the red spotty one. A toadstool? Yeah. Like but, a fairy toadstool? Yeah, 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 yeah. Not that bit. It's it's the... The shaft. The shaft. <laughs> <laughs> there's something very phallic about it right yeah um so moving on um i haven't looked at the mushroom toadstool or the clay since um and that's on having adhd um but i usually flick between actually do you think you could name my like three hyper focuses that i flick between yeah go on sims yes that's that's one of three my, my sims. Yeah, so Sims, right now crocheting. Yes. This one should be obvious. Books? Yeah. Oh. So like, I rotate between books, crocheting, and The Sims. Oh, so, like, now I've made my crop top. Yeah. That's my crocheting hyper focus days Done. over now. Yeah. Your days are numbered. Um, I think I'm falling back into my book hyper focus, which I'll fall into. I usually fall into for like one or two books. Okay. And then I'm like, okay, Sims now. Right. Got it. <laughs> um, where was I going with that? um i don't really know me neither great um oh i was saying um last week i finished this book ah uh, okay and yeah. then my hyper focus switched mm-hmm. um so i've actually gone sort of like books crochet books crochet at the minute i haven't had a sims one for a small while yeah um, but i finished fix the system not the women holy shit look how many um, tabs you've made yeah Fuck me. um so this is by laura bates i'll show you like a couple of pages um Quick question. On the camera. I see you've got different colours of tab. Yeah. 
Do the different colours have meanings? Yes. Um, so there's just a lot of highlighting. Holy shit. Um, it's, yeah, it's it's one of those books. It's like it's kind of like the film you mentioned in the sense that, like, everyone should read it, mm. but it's hard. But you're not going to enjoy it. Yeah. No. Um, yeah, so my tabs, I have, I try to match my tabs to um, the cover, the colours of I the cover. I just noticed that. Um, so that we've got um, pink, blue, white and black tabs. Um, the pink tabs mean, that sounds familiar. Okay. Yep. Um, the blue tabs mean fucking ew. That's <laughs> gross. Right. Um, I'll give you a few like, example quotes. Okay, yeah, yep. please do. Um, the black ones are an eye roll. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the white ones are like info, facts, and quotes. I see. Uh-huh. I feel like um, just from you flicking through and like looking over your shoulder, I feel like there are a lot of ew, that's gross. Yeah, a lot Mainly of Mainly ew, that's gross. Yeah. So I'll give you just like an example or two. Um, so, I mean, I guess I'll start with the first one. Um, so this was tabbed pink, which meant um, sounds familiar. Okay. Um, and the quote is, at primary school, I'm baffled by, quote unquote, jokes about a woman with small feet who can fit closer to the kitchen sink. Kids who think, quote, make me a sandwich is an effective insult. And, <laughs> and the total playground segregation between footballing boys and skipping girls. Oh, my God. Flashback. Yeah. Um, the first fucking gross tabbed <laughs> is... Um, um, in my mid-teens when I wear a close-fitting top with a caption on the front a male teacher stops me in the corridor holds my shoulders and slowly leerily reads each word aloud when I confide to another teacher that we need the costume department to purchase slips because the white dresses we've been provided to wear in a theatre production are see-through he grins and tells me in front of my mostly male classmates but we like to see your underwear Another male teacher sits on the edge of a girl's desk in English class, pouts and asks her, do you think I'm sexy? Fucking hell. That was tabbed fucking ew. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Vile. Gross. Oh my God, it's on me. Yeah. It's on me. Right. <clears throat> um, the first eye roll tab mm-hmm. is a member of my family expresses dismay that my brother has chosen to study languages at university. Apparently an inappropriate and unimpressive subject. When I protest that I studied English, the relative laughs doesn't matter what you studied. You're a girl. Uh, I'm sorry. What fucking year is all of this from? Like, I don't, I, I don't know. All of that um, is just wild. And then the first white tab, which was for information. Mm-hmm. Um, is that white or pink? I think that's white. Um, well, it's for info, facts and quotes. So I assume... This is for a quote. Okay. Um, there is a continuum of gender inequality with wolf whistles, catcalls, sexist jokes, gendered language and sweeping stereotypes occupying one end, while rape, domestic abuse, forced marriage, gen- female genital mutilation and so-called honour killings sit at the other. With maternity <laughs> discrimination, workplace sexual harassment, gender pay gap and so much more lying somewhere between. Yeah. Have you ever seen, um, oh, there's like a, a pyramid um of like rape culture no but i can imagine you, yeah you know. so like at the at the bottom so the foundation of the pyramid are things that are like kind of microaggressions mm-hmm. um so like things like um you know girls feet is smaller so they can get closer to the sink and do washing up or whatever the fuck joke that yeah. is um, my personal guess, favorite was yeah i've got a dishwasher she's there Oh my god, the amount of times I've heard that. Oh, it's like, oh, have you got a dishwasher? Yeah, she's upstairs. (laughs) 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 Oh my god. The worst one is this happens a lot in work. A lot in work. And I've found that this is not just a where I work now thing. I've had this a lot. Okay. But I've only just got sort of what I think is, I guess, um, old enough, ugly enough and wise enough to not laugh it. Ooh, because when okay. you work in a customer service job, it's very easy to just go, <laughs> just because mm. that's, you, you're on you're in customer service mode, right? Right. And now I just stare at people. <laughs> um, Power and it's it's always men. Yeah, I'm gonna like it. It's always men, and it's always when they're with their wife or their partner, or um, and I'll be like talking to the man because the woman stood behind her like on her phone or whatever, mm. um, and I'll be like, oh, do you want a bag? And he'll be like, no, I've got one here, a and bag. then like. 
yeah it's like a name for like an old like an old woman bag. yeah an old bag oh, right. he's like no oh, I've got one of those yeah. here <laughs> don't need another one of those and I'm like yeah but do you want a bag to put your books in <laughs> like answer the fucking question um, <laughs> when I was in and um, so this is my second store but when I was in my first store it was in a much smaller town mm. and so I'm now in the city prior I was in a small town and I actually turned around to someone and I was like that's not nice <laughs> good for you what or funny you and he was just like oh she knows i'm kidding yeah still it's, it's not funny it's not funny like she might be fine with it but i'm not like, you're making everyone here feel uncomfortable also fucking just get good just get a new joke yeah just, just get just better jokes effort. this is so funny because like, i'd laugh more at a why did the chicken cross the road joke like genuinely 100 percent. those jokes are hilarious men think they're so funny compared to women and yet they can yeah it's like a stereotype of women not being funny exactly Mm. and men therefore being the funny ones yeah but like consistently they come out with jokes like that it's like you're not proving anyone yeah no any of your Um, gender what's your best joke um i actually don't know jokes wow i'm just naturally hysterical that would have been a would have been a really good (laughs) opportunity to say like my life or something oh fuck Uh, should we take it again no Oh, <laughs> um, you're so mean. My best joke for the people at home is: Where does a whale go to check its BMI? For fuck's sake! I don't know, Hope. Where does it go? <laughs> the railway <laughs> station. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what was the funniest thing about that joke? Is the fact that you had to laugh before you could give us the punchline. <laughs> well, my favourite joke was always: um, What did one snowman say to the other? I don't know. Can you smell carrots? Fuck's sake. Um, but everyone knew it. So every time I'd someone would be like, tell me your best joke, and I'd be like, oh, what did one snowman say to the other? And then you know when that fucking annoying person just answers your joke instead yeah. of saying, I don't know what, yeah. just letting you tell the fucking joke. And you're like, <laughs> you're a sh- if you do that, you're a shitty person. <laughs> just we let someone you. tell their joke. Um, how did we get onto this? I don't know. Oh, men being shit at jokes. Misogynistic yeah, jokes. Misogynistic the pyramid jokes. of Oh, the rape, rape culture, culture pyramid. <laughs> Let's go back to that. Okay. So, yeah, you've got, like, shitty jokes, like, normalised everyday sexism at the bottom mm-hmm. of the pyramid. Um, and then it sort of gradually gets worse as it goes up. Um, it's, like, basically devaluing women and femmes at the bottom. And then like through sort of social means and then it goes it gets more violent towards the top like all of that stuff if you took that away you wouldn't have um rape culture because it wouldn't be supported by any attitudes that make rape something that people do yeah for sure um so yeah it reminds me of that yeah which like that's basically what it's saying right is if we didn't have this culture Mm. when um boys are brought up into men who are allowed to make those jokes mm. because the whole boys will be boys thing mm. and oh it's it's just a joke it's not real it's mm. not reality that's not actually how I think I'm yeah. just making the joke same with racism right mm. you make a racist joke oh I'm not actually racist it's just funny mm. um where was I going you were talking about the system yeah right <laughs> so like yeah if we didn't bring boys up who then grow into men who think that it's okay to make those jokes then they yeah. would never be able to evolve those views into like you say like the top of the rape culture pyramid sure, sure. um so yeah it goes into like our schooling system mm-hmm. um the police is a big one it talks a lot about oh, um, yeah. sarah everard oh. um which yeah really hard but definitely um uh, because mm. her killer wayne cousins was a police officer mm-hmm. um and there's actually, um, I've been seeing a lot of TV adverts for, I think, a Channel 4 documentary called some, like, uh, the tagline for it is, like, can the police police themselves? Ooh. And I'm like, well, no. No, of course They've they proven can't. that yeah. again and again and That's again. We don't need independent a, inquiries. Yeah, we don't need a fucking Channel 4 show to tell us that. <laughs> we, it's very oh, clear God. the police can't plant police themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it goes into Wayne Cousins and... Um, all the times he should have been caught because he had like multiple he had complaints against him already yeah. um, that were not being investigated or hadn't been investigated properly. Mm. Um, and yeah, so it goes into the police in general. It talks about um, the police and the courts um, and the media actually calling things isolated incidents a lot mm. and how that's just so not the case. Yeah. And it's like, don't panic. This is an isolated incident. It's when um, it's when they use the phrase, oh, it's a bad apple. Yeah. 
that's just about it. I, that's actually um, so the chapters um, are called the list. It begins um, patriarchy. What patriarchy? Isolated incidents. What and apples? apples. Um, putting the victim on trial. Yeah. Um, politics and privilege. Media misogyny. Joining the dots and then fix the system, not the women. Interesting. Um, which is a bonus chapter, I believe, mm, um, okay. from the new publication. So. Yeah, it's um, it's one of those books that absolutely everyone should read. I thought because it was so short, I was going to fly through it. Mm. Um, and in actual fact, it took me weeks because yeah. it's so hard. I had to keep putting it down mm. and like processing. Yeah. Also, obviously, the fact that I was highlighting and tabbing will have slowed me down. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's it's difficult. Yeah, really difficult. It was less that it was triggering me and more that it, I would just couldn't wrap my head around how this is yeah i knew that this was true because i live it Mm. right but someone putting it in front of you Mm. is really like i I can't wrap my head around how this has become yeah a thing like how have we got here Mm. and you know what it makes me think like this this isn't a book that you needed to read of all people this is this is a book that like men need to that men need to read and maybe teenagers yeah maybe teenagers yeah um yeah, and that's that's one of the reasons that I don't read a lot of like feminist literature because like like you say like you you live it yeah. you've you you know you you know because it's happened to your friends or to you or to your family yeah. or people you know like sure. it's not necessarily like something that I feel uneducated about yeah. you know just from being here yeah <laughs> um you telling me about this book reminded me of a book called Bitch. This is all about like what it actually means scientifically to be female. Mm-hmm. It's very, very dense. There's a lot of information. It's so interesting. But um, I've only made it through like the introductory chapter so far because mm-hmm. there's so much to take in. Yeah, for sure. um, but she explains how um, we have this idea that, um, that women are passive mm-hmm. and men are active yeah. and that um, men are aggressive and women are like peaceful, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. One of the reasons we have that idea is that um, when Darwin was coming up with his theory of evolution, he needed to make it more palatable to a Victorian audience. Mm-hmm. So obviously in sort of the Victorian era, um, everyone still believed in God, but um, there was a lot of like scientific discovery. And so mm-hmm. to make it more palatable that evolution was a thing and that um, you know, that we actually had proof for that. He dumbed women down. He, yeah, he essentially made it so that it sounded like, um, you know, men were the winners. Like mm. they were the one who had this really strong sperm that raced to get the egg and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And the egg just sits there passively like, okay, fertilize me. <laughs> like he made that a thing. So when, <laughs> when like we got taught that in GCSE, that, that was what we were yeah. taught. But, Actually, there are tons of scientific studies that show that sperm are actually really shit at what they're supposed yeah. to do. Like they they are literally like bumping into the fucking furniture while trying to get from A to fucking B. Um, they're really bad at it, um, and you know most of most of them will die just because they're mm-hmm. crap. Like, why do you think you'd need millions of sperm yeah. per one ejaculation? Yeah. Not because they're all really strong swimmers. <laughs> because they're shit um, and then there was a study um like a couple of years ago that we were talking about yesterday yeah um where eggs actually will put out um hormones called chemoattractants um and they will um basically like choose sort of attract the sperm that they want yeah like the, gen- the genetically egg. viable exactly sperm. Yeah. exactly so really this idea that like she choosy yeah she choosy <laughs> and so like really this idea that like women um you know, even from from like preconception, yeah. like girls are passive, boys yeah. are are active. It's just it's just totally skewed for yeah. like that really patriarchal period in time. Yeah. Um. And so he like a lot of his theories about like you know why females are like this and why males are like this are very much patriarchalized. That's not a word, but you totally know what I mean. Yeah, for sure. It's very very interesting. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to reading it. This leads me on really nicely to The Vegetarian by Han Kang. Okay, so this came out ages ago. There's the cover. It's really beautiful. It is um, a gorgeous cover. It's absolutely stunning. So you've got the you've got the text in the middle, 
vegetarian by Han Kang and it's got this uh, white wing in the middle and then the veins of a leaf behind it in this sort of like foil rosy foiled um color and it's just stunning and um yeah this this came out a really long time ago it won the man booker international prize in 2016 Um, i was gonna say that must have been a while ago because it's now just the booker oh is that did they change it from the man i believe so yeah interesting correct me if i'm wrong so the vegetarian um actually leads on really nicely from fix the system not the women because this is oh my god it was it's a beautiful fantastically written book it totally deserved the booker fuck me like it's it's so rich like it has so many layers to it there's so much character development Mm -hmm. and usually i i don't go for books that are character driven like character development driven it's usually like plot for me because i like a lot of like genre yeah yeah, yeah, like genre typical stuff yeah but um yeah this this was like literary and horror and weird Mm -hmm. and gothic and 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 like there was just so much to it um so it's about this um korean woman called young hai but the book is chopped into like three parts Mm -hmm. Um, and you never actually hear from Young Hai about this story of her life. Um, so it starts off from the perspective of her husband. And then um, the second part is the perspective of her brother-in-law. And the third final part is um, from the pers- 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 perspective mm. Mm, the perspective of her sister. Um, and so basically at the beginning, you find that her husband has married her because she's ordinary. He has this idea of himself where he's um, a very ordinary man. There's really not a lot to him. He just wants a quiet life. And Young Hai is completely unthreatening to that. She's, mm-hmm. if anything, she seems even more ordinary, even more passive and submissive than he is in his life. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why he marries her. So, you know. What a reason to marry someone. Romantic as fuck. Am I right? Uh- <laughs> Normally... That's the opposite of a reason to marry someone. That's quite a big theme in this in this story. Like, like, I'm not marrying you because you're ordinary. Mm. I'm marrying you because they are, because I find you the opposite. Exactly, right? and because like you would you would want to feel like that person feels you are extraordinary yeah, as well. For sure, like it's it's not about just how you feel about them. It's like yeah. how they make you feel. Yeah. Um. But there's yeah there's a lot of this um sort of discussion of like why people have got married to each other in Mm. the first place like i think there's a lot of expectation that people just get married yeah and and you do you know you do a b and c and you do it in that order and that's just how you do it Mm -hmm. um but yeah so young hai has um has a dream one night that she is like haunted by all of the animals she's ever eaten sounds like my worst nightmare yeah it's it's really creepy and the only time you actually hear from young hai is um in the way she describes the dreams mm-hmm. that she's having um and she's really disturbed by them to the point where she decides to sort of like atone for what she's consumed in her life so she becomes a vegetarian so all of all the meat all the dairy products everything goes out of the house and she won't touch cook eat anything other than vegetables so she's vegan she's basically yeah she's a vegan basically that's um, not as as ringy a title it's not it's really not. I feel like a lot of people wouldn't pick up the book yeah. if it was called The Vegan. For sure. Because vegans get a lot of shit. Rap, yeah. For, for <laughs> um, sure. But yeah, so so she becomes veggie. Um, husband doesn't like this. No, no. This is not expected. This is not what he signed up for. He wants his dinner on the table and he wants there to be meat in it. He is pissed. <laughs> he's really pissed. Right. And then he rings her mum and dad and he's like, um, just so you know, like young guy's being a bit of a bitch and she won't like cook me steak anymore. And they are dismayed. Like they are, they could not be more embarrassed. They're like, oh my God, we're so sorry. We'll talk to her. And it's like this whole thing, like there's so much shame in the family just because she's like decided to okay. stop eating in this way. It's like, she's really put him out. Like it's, mm. there's a lot of shame around the fact that she's like putting out her husband. It's just, it's wild and so the more and more the family get involved with trying to force her to eat meat and all Mm -hmm. this stuff the more violent they get towards her that's a bit mad it is it's really so weird yeah and it's and it's mainly like cook your own fucking steak bro mate it would make his life so much easier just yeah do it yourself (laughs) 
There are very simple solutions to this problem. Basically, what is happening is Young High is having this breakdown. Mm-hmm. Um, and what's what's really driving it, other than feeling like she needs to atone for all this meat that she's eaten, is that there is so much violence in her life just from like the male gaze. Mm-hmm. Like her husband is so repressive of her and he wants her to be what he wants her to be. There's mm-hmm. no care for her, nothing. And then with her brother-in-law, he sexualizes her. Great. And he's an artist. He so it's the opposite of um, her husband. Yeah. Like her husband couldn't give a shit about her. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas he puts her on a pedestal, but from like an artist perspective. Mm. So he wants to like film her body. He wants to like sexualize her. And he just fantasizes about I don't like either end of the these time. scales. They're, and they're somewhere in the middle <laughs> where people actually get treated like human beings, yeah. you know? All it does, all of this pushing and pulling from the men in her life, mm-hmm. all it does is push her further away from her own body and further into this sort of psychosis and severe eating disorder yeah, that she's I, I starting to imagine. develop. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and it's yeah, it's an amazing book. And I think for me, it was about how the male gaze makes everyone mental, basically. <laughs> how can we truly be sane when the male gaze is what drives so much of our interactions? Neither of the men in the story were happy. Things didn't go well for them. And obviously, Young Hai was um, pushed to like this really, really unstable place. And then her sister-in-law is like trying to pick up the pieces, mm. but realising that actually the only, maybe the only thing that does make sense is how Young Hai has like conceived of the world. The only way that she can live in a world free of harm and not causing harm mm-hmm. is by becoming a plant. And this is her psychosis. She wants to become a plant. So she tries to stop eating. She wants to like grow that that's, way. That's she, yeah. And like, you that's know, a brain fuck. It is a brain fuck. Like she's she's this whole obviously just one big brain. Fuck. Yeah, she's she's going off her rocker, and no one's helping. <laughs> no one's helping. Um, I've not heard that phrase in so long. <laughs> <laughs> going off your rocker. Oh God, yeah. So so good. That like I said, it's so rich in all these different themes and all these different ways that you relate to each other when you've got patriarchy in such a rigid way mm-hmm. in, in society and culture and your families and your homes, everything. And then it does I sound actually, good. it is it's high up on my TBR. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. And it's it's a pretty short book. You know, you know, you were saying about potentially flying through a book because it's it's quite short. Yeah, this was another one of those where I would read it in big batches and then in just little bits here and there because there there is so much to take in yeah i'm starting to think that um this is going to be a theme with thinner books right because mm. because they're shorter they mm. have to make a bigger impact yeah. in a smaller amount of time yeah that's um, true and so actually when we pick up a thin book and we're like well oh, i'll fly through this it's really short that actually that's probably quite triggering and yeah it's quite heavy um, and you're probably not unless you've got a strong stomach yeah um speaking of strong stomachs so i finished <laughs> <laughs> of Cattle and Men uh-huh. by Anna Paula Meyer. And um, this is 97 pages. And I talked a little bit about this last week, but just a reminder. So it's translated from Portuguese, I believe, by Zoe Perry. And it's it's basically set in like a like a sort of Wild West place, but like in Brazil. Uh-huh. And it's very, very poor, this area. Not not a lot of things growing. Like the rivers are... Oh, I'm so sorry. Am I boring you? Should I shut the fuck up? Yes. <laughs> Please. I've not had much sleep. Oh, no. Well, whose fault is that? That would be mine. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, it's a very, very poor area. All you've got around is um, an abattoir and a uh, like a meat processing factory. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you've got this sort of river in the middle where just people dump all sorts of shit in it. It's full of blood. Sounds it's like full Salford. Of bodies. <laughs> it is, Sounds like the well. It literally is. <laughs> if Salford was really hot and dry. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, so it's like a really barren place. And there's a lot of talk of how poor everyone is here you've got people that sort of descend on the abattoir like vultures because they're so hungry so when you get cows that that die before they've gone to slaughter you have to chuck them out because they might be diseased but you've got people who are so hungry that they just like come chop up that meat and cut it away as soon as there's a similar sort of 
trope, I guess, mm. in um, Tender is the Flesh oh, by God. Augustina Basterica. Yeah. We're in, we're in a dystopia where we're eating human meat, right? We're, oh, well, we're not just mm. eating human meat. We're actually breeding people for, um, they call it special meat. They don't call it like human meat. They call it special meat. Mm. And certain ones for various reasons, like you say, aren't, can't be sold. Mm-hmm. can't be packaged and sold and so they're like chucked over the fence and the poorer people in this in this society will wait outside the fence for diseased or otherwise ruined meat um, and will eat it because it's the only thing they have to eat that is stomach churning yeah that's on my tbr but right now i don't know why yeah mm. yeah it's so- very interesting i i'm glad i read it um, mm. But it's vile. It's funny reading The Vegetarian and Of Cattle and Men in the same week because that's a lot of anti animal products uh-huh. literature. Yeah. Um, and How do you feel about that as a meat eater? Well, I so I used to be vegan actually. Mm. I was vegan for all the reasons you would be vegan like for the animals, um, for the potential health benefit, and for the environment. Yeah. But what I found was that it got to one particularly hard winter. And I really, really craved tuna specifically, which is weird Weird. of all the cravings to have. But it was probably like an omega-3 thing or Mm. like an iron thing or maybe all of the above. But I I found that I actually felt a lot healthier going back to eating more meat products. And, you know, if if it ever becomes available that lab-grown meat is a thing that people can afford. Yeah then I'm all over that. I yeah, would rather, for not, sure. I would yeah, rather not be part of killing an animal. Yeah. Um, and like factory farming and how bad all of that is mm-hmm. for the environment and for us. But yeah, here we are until then. Yeah. But it has been really, really interesting. What I think Anna Paula Maya does really, really well in Of Cattle and Men is explores what it's like to work in meat production yeah. and how you're, you're only going to have abattoirs in really, really poor areas mm. when no one gives a shit about the people who live there. Yeah. And you're only going to have really poor people doing that kind mm-hmm. of work. Um, and I read a study ages ago when I was vegan about how when you've got an abattoir in an area, the likelihood of human-human violence goes up. Wow. Yeah. So okay. like person-on-person crime. Yeah, because you'll be right desensitised to it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. If you if you don't care about an animal, yeah, the psychological impact it must have to to be around for death sure. that much, yeah, and to be part of it that much must uh-huh. be whew, like a lot. Um, but there was a lot of discussion as well of like religion and mm-hmm. philosophy and how all of that comes into you know, like the main character and how he sees his job. And he he does believe in God, but he thinks of himself as impure because he's doing this. And at the same time... I can um, understand how you would think that of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And at the same time, he believes that he is the best person to be doing it because he actually cares about the animals. Okay. So yeah, yeah. he's a he's a stun operator. So he he is the person that like knocks the cow on the head before it goes to slaughter. Mm-hmm. And he's developed this way of doing it where... Um, first of all, he like makes a cross on the cow's head, um, to like bless its soul because he does believe they have souls. Okay. And then he makes sure that they're not afraid and then he knocks them out Mm -hmm. and he doesn't miss. He's got very good aim. He won't let anyone else do the job if they're not, if they haven't watched him. And, you know, so he, he sort of gives them as sort of, kind an ending as you can give in that situation yeah there's a lot of talk of like how relentless the work is how the people that work there don't you know receive the benefits of like having this really nice meat they've never tried a burger before in their lives and there's like a lot of like weirdness in it as well because everything starts to die or go missing and this is like this is people this is cattle this is anyone yeah. anything and it's like this the cycle of death and violence mm-hmm. is just absolutely relentless yeah and i think books like the vegetarian of cattle and men and like mm. we said like tender is the flesh do that really well and that they're not well i can't like i can't speak for the authors but to me they're not designed to make you stop eating meat they're not designed no. to like turn you vegetarian or turn you vegan or like preach the virtues of either or mm. but to make sure that if you are choosing to be a meat eater or you are choosing to be a vegetarian, you are choosing to be vegan, that you're introspective of that decision yeah, and that you're constantly critical of it. Yeah. 
yeah, for sure. Like I didn't feel like I was I was the bad guy yeah. from reading these books. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it was really, really good to like think about it and reassess. Because mm-hmm. I've only read one book mm. this week. Um, <laughs> I'm going to do like what I've got coming up, which I've got four on my TBR. I'm in a very non-fic mood. Yeah. All four of these are non-fic. Three of them are YA non-fic. So the three that I've got coming up, it is LGBTQ plus history month Mm -hmm. for anyone that doesn't know February. And so these two, so what's the tea and this book is gay um, are both by Juno Dawson. Such great couples. Um, Yeah. They're so pretty. And then proud is a collection of writers and artists, but it's compiled by Juno Dawson. One of the writers, Simon James Green wrote gay club, which has the most beautiful glittery rainbow cover. It's gorgeous. So it's basically a collection of writing and art from a collection of LGBTQ plus people. And then this book is gay. And what's the tea? Like I said, both written by Juno Dawson. So this is a no-nonsense guide to all things trans and or non-binary. And then this one is whether you fancy boys or girls or both, whether you feel like a boy or girl on the inside, you're just you, right? Laugh out loud, wit and wisdom. Juno Dawson smashes the myths and prejudice surrounding sexual orientation and gender identity and tells it how it really is. So I'm 99% sure that I already know everything that's going to come up in these books. (laughs) A, because I'm just so gay. Because I'm gay. But B, because they are YA. Mm -hmm. So they're aimed at people who are anywhere between 15 to 20 Mm. is sort of where I would say these books are aimed. Um, And also for people who are like maybe just coming out or just sort of figuring themselves out. The reason then I've sort of picked them up for this month is because A, I haven't read them yet and they've been on my TBR for forever, but B, because I think it's just really important to just check in with what you think you know every now and then. And, you know, I might learn something new. Mm -hmm. And if not, I've sort of (laughs) reiterated the knowledge I already have. And then Proud, some of them are like short stories, some poetry, there's some doodles in here. Oh, that's There's a a Heartstopper page. Oh, that's so cute. And then my fourth book, that I'm definitely, I think I'm going to read this first because I think I'll fly through it, but it, it does look quite information heavy, mm-hmm. is What We Don't Talk About When We Talk About Fat. It's by Aubrey Gordon. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know, Aubrey runs the Your Fat Friend um, Instagram, um, which I think is at YR Fat yeah. Friend. And we, along with another friend, Ben, Hi, Ben. Hey, Ben. Went to see the screening, uh, like a pre-screening, which was really, really fun, of the Your Fat Friend movie. Yeah, like a documentary. Yeah, and it was absolutely fantastic. We loved it. it We were also really lucky to stay for a little bit after the movie and have Mm -hmm. a little bit of Q&A time with Aubrey Gordon and the director of the movie. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm really excited to read this. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's about how we as a society view fat people. And like the stigma around the word. The word, that. yeah, for that sure. That was like a big focus in the documentary, wasn't yeah. it? It's never come naturally to me to use the word fat mm. for anyone but myself. Oh, that's interesting. And so I feel like since seeing the movie, mm. I've tried to sort of catch myself and be like, it's not a dirty word. Yeah. Even just saying that as well, that's like, mm. it's about how we as a society view fat people. Mm. Like it, it feels wrong. Yeah. Feels like I'm being insulted. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm really excited for this. Ace. Um, yeah, I'm excited to read my copy of that as well. Yeah, we both grabbed a copy. I'm not going to lie to you, this is not easy to get hold of. Um, really? I had to order it through work. Right. No um, suppliers had um, copies of it, so we just had to wait for it to come in. <sighs> That's really um, annoying. And I couldn't get hold of the paperback, which was really weird. Normally the paperback of things is easier to get hold of, if anything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we got hold of two hardback copies that was all we could get hold of like Aubrey Gordon has like such a great sense of humor mm-hmm. and she's so gentle and generous when she talks about her experiences as a fat yeah. person and what what was so lovely about the documentary as well was like how her doing this work bridged so many gaps between her and her family yeah. as well uh, yeah it's a really really beautiful gentle yeah. documentary. it's really it's really like conversational and yeah. very like 
occasionally witty yeah. and very like self-reflective mm. and all of that stuff so if um i obviously will talk about this once i've read it in a future episode so that's what i'm reading next are those four well, little and, and Aubrey what? Gordon's gay as well so Aubrey this, Gordon this whole is thing gay. is a gay hall. yeah I'm looking forward to them all mm. so yeah love that <laughs> my choices for gay month are as follows none of the above by Travis Alabanza all about um being non-binary and black and mixed race mm -hmm. if you've read this would you say mm -hmm. this is more of a like memoir type thing than a yes info yeah yeah okay cool cool cool, cool. and then um my second choice is the book of non-binary joy by ben pesci Pe pechi i'm not really sure how you say their name this is like a how-to guide so that's what i'll be reading for game month now i thought it would be really fun if we played a game a literary game um, for reference bia has chosen this game and given me no idea what it is. <laughs> so I'm going into this completely blind. What? Um, and I'm a oh, little bit nervous about the whole be. thing. We did discuss some games that we yeah. could play, but we both knew about them. And this game has been done behind my back. <laughs> okay, so are you ready? No. <laughs> Great, let's go. Great. Um, so this is Shag, Marry, no. Avoid, mm. or Kill. I think Kill's funnier. <laughs> No. Um, for reference for podcast listeners, um, Hope has sort of melted away, <laughs> like down the edge of my bed. <laughs> what if I don't know the characters? How do I decide between Shag, Mary and Kill? It's not characters. Oh no, what is it? It's, um, it's tropes. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Can we sort of define the terms of Shag, Mary, Kill, given <laughs> that it's not people? Yeah, okay. So, so what, what is the, like, the equivalent of Shag? Okay. Is it like yeah. I'll take it or leave it? Is marry? Yes, give so me. So marry, marry is like the thing that you would stay with, right? Okay, the thing yeah, you yeah. would choose over all other. Shag things. Shag is like a drop in and out. Yeah, exactly. Literally, as the case may be. And kill is no fucking thank you. No worries. Okay, okay you ready? Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm on all it. All right. Shag, marry, kill. Mm -hmm. Um, a book that is an extended metaphor. So like Peach that right. we talked about last year. Last last year. <laughs> Last week. Last week, Jesus. Yep. Um, stream of consciousness with no punctuation. Right. Or a novel, but it reads like a short story collection. One more time? No. Because they're all awful. <laughs> um, kill, I, kill, kill. I would marry a book with an extended metaphor. Oh. Because... Interesting. While Peach highly disappointed me, mm. I think it had a great promise. And right, had it yeah. been done better, I mm. would have really enjoyed it. So that was more about the execution of it. Than, yes, yeah. than the okay. fact that it was an extended metaphor. Okay, so we have a marry. Um, I would shag a stream of... No. <laughs> oh, oh, actually, I don't know. <laughs> um, oh. Um, so here's my issue. Um, stream of consciousness is a very literary feature. Yes. Yeah. And I hate lit fit. Um, Kill it. Kill it. However, oh. I love Virginia Woolf. Mm -hmm. And Virginia Woolf was like the pioneer of stream of consciousness. Oh, damn. Um, and I don't think I can lose Virginia Woolf. So I'm going to have to kill oh. a novel that reads like a short story collection. Damn. Okay, you heard it here first. All right, you ready <laughs> for the next one? Yeah. Shag, Mary kill. Literary gay romance, but no smart. Right. Okay, zero spice. Mm -hmm. Gay romance with smart that's been nominated for a bad sex award. Oh, no. <laughs> right. Or a pretty innocent gay YA. Oh, um, I'll marry the gay YA. Okay. Um, shag the um, romance with no spice mm -hmm. and kill the bad sex award. <laughs> I actually fully agree with I that. I don't have yeah. time for reading bad sex scenes. It's not okay. No, it's not okay. It's absolutely not. Okay. If you're going to write spice, either do it right or don't do it. 100%. 100%. Um, okay, shag, marry, kill. A horror featuring octopuses. <sighs> right. <laughs> A horror featuring gross eating habits or a horror featuring deep space? I'd... <laughs> the face journey's hope is going on right now. I would marry the gross eating habits. Wow. Wow. Shag the deep space 
<laughs> and kill the octopus. <laughs> you fucking hate octopuses. I hate, yeah, yeah. You hate I'm, anything to do with the deep sea. I really do. <laughs> I'm fascinated by them um, because they are absolutely one of the most intelligent beings it's honestly why on this planet yeah. i don't think people realize how intelligent octopuses are mm-hmm. yes that is the right plural yeah it's either or yes. so don't come for us in the comment <laughs> section all right i have searched for it many times to prove people wrong you can <laughs> use octopi you can also use octopuses <laughs> moving on yeah i'm i'm in awe of them in the sense that they're impeccably intelligent and i don't yeah. think they get the praise for that or the recognition for that that they deserve however as you say i hate deep sea i hate sea creatures they freak me the fuck out if you just had a jellyfish that would have been an easier decision. Really? I'm terrified of jellyfish. Oh, wow. Are they like the worst? Sea I've like got a phobia of jellyfish. Wow. Okay. Um, Shag, Mary kill. Yeah. Queer historical fiction. I hate historical qu- fiction. Oscar Wilde books. Okay. Or contemporary fiction where the queer main character dies. No, oh, not a bury your gaze. Oh, bury your gaze. I've, I've never read any Oscar Wilde. Okay. Shame on you. Shame. For shame. Um, and therefore, I don't have any problem with him. Okay. Whereas I do have a problem with the bury your gaze trope. So I'm going to go with, oh, no, I don't like historical fiction. You hate historical Shit. fiction. Famously. I had a moment where I forgot what the first one was then. <laughs> um. Oh, fuck. But it's queer historical fiction. Oh, They'll yeah. be smart. Um, okay, I'll probably marry the queer historical fic. Wow, that's a turnaround. Shag the Oscar Wilde. Yeah. And um, kill the Berry Gaze. I fucking couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. Couldn't agree with you more. For sure. Um, okay, Shag, Mary kill. This is the last one. Okay. A feminist novel written by a man. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) We're killing that one. (laughs) Okay. A feminist novel written by a vocal transphobe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or, or feminist sci-fi novel by someone non-problematic, but it's really long, like 600 pages. Maybe. Oh. <laughs> Shite. Shite. Um, I'd... Fuck. <laughs> I'd marry the feminist novel by a man. Oh. Shag the sci-fi feminist novel that's really long yeah. and kill the trans folk. <laughs> well, that is the end of Shag, Marry, Kill. Um, fuck. <laughs> did you enjoy yourself? I um, think it was very funny. No, I hated it. I'm did sure you? it was very funny for you, but it wasn't for me. That's great. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think that's very entertaining, so I might do more of that. Right. Well, it's, <laughs> it's my turn to game you next week. Oh, okay. Is that how words work? No. It's your turn to create a game that you make me play. That was a considerably longer sentence. (laughs) Yes, but it was correct. If you have any suggestions for books that you'd like us to read and cover, um, let us know in the comments of wherever you're listening to this or on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Yeah. Also, let us know what you're reading because we are interested. Yeah, we want to know. And if something really interesting comes up and you can sell us on it, Mm. we might read it. Definitely. If you like our show, please remember to like, rate and subscribe as it will help us reach more hectic bookworms. You can find us on Instagram at hectic.eclecticpod and Twitter at thehecticpod and on YouTube as Hectic and Eclectic Podcast. You can send suggestions and, you know, like fan mail and stuff to hectic.eclecticpod at gmail.com and um, any hate mail um, up your fucking ass. (laughs) 